first close below supply so now you have two areas of support coming in for tomorrow you got 912 and if the bears start taking control of that 912 910 level then you got all the way welcome to access a trader the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success profitability and longevity thank you for joining us here's dan shapiro to help you find your edge master your process and own your future hey guys good evening everybody welcome to uh another edition of uh, the access of trader.com nightly wrap-up show hope everybody is uh doing well uh, i haven't been with you guys for a couple of days uh, a couple of literally two days ago um i started feeling under the weather you know head cold this that the other thing fatigued the next day yesterday um i felt a little worse and the next thing i know uh, we're getting an email from school. Uh, my son comes down with COVID. You know, and then and the world comes, as everybody knows who have young children, um, you know, scattering throughout the house. Um, 105 fever my son had. Now he's back down to like 101. He's a tough kid. He's going to fight through it. But as you can imagine, uh, all hell broke loose. We had to get the house together. Everybody had to separate all this stuff. And in the meantime, uh, I'm going through my old thing. So I went, got tested. Uh, fortunately, I got a negative. I have no idea how, but I got a negative reading. Um, my son's in quarantine, well, uh, isolation now. Um, apparently, I'm just fighting something. And uh, apparently, you could still get sick, and it's not COVID, um, but apparently, it sucks. So hopefully, everybody is safe. Uh, hopefully, everybody uh, is healthy, and that's the most important part. So um, what a crazy couple of days. Uh, yesterday, you had this really incredible move kind of like Batman and you know and Superman coming to save the bulls uh, at the 50 day moving average on the queues and again this was tested you know this, this has been tested several times here on the 50 day moving average and each time the bulls came back in and really started catapulting the market higher but there was nothing bigger than what we saw yesterday uh, the, the day started out pretty good um, you had Boeing that we talked about on the short side a couple of days uh, broke down yesterday, really, really good breakdown yesterday. We'll talk about Boeing in a second. I think it goes lower. Um, you had a lot of names getting really soft. Teslas of the world, which had a really incredible, really incredible move today. Again, we'll get to that in a second. But the most important part was everybody's waiting for the Fed. And I, I will say this much, you know, I'm not, uh, I'm not a big believer in, you know, reading blogs and all that stuff. But, it, you know, whenever you do go into a financial site, you always hear people complaining about the Fed. Well, if it wasn't for the Fed printing money, if it wasn't for the Fed, if it wasn't for the Fed, the market would be in shambles. Well, again, yeah, yes, you're right, right? You're absolutely right. The Fed started buying back mortgage-backed securities all the way around 2008, 2009. That was the mortgage, that was the mortgage crisis. Again, they were the backbone, right? They were the stabilizing force. The tapering really never came, you know, they talked about tapering for years and years and years. We really haven't seen it. They're still in a very, very aggressive program. They started talking about you know, three rate hikes uh, going into uh, this year. You know, we'll see. But the most important part is the investor, right? The investor, you can't have it both ways. You can't talk about bitch and complain about the Fed is the only reason that uh, the market is holding up and then sit there in the fetal position underneath your desk praying to God that when the market goes lower and the market has been in a very very aggressive sell side bias you can't sit there and pray to god that you know the market is going to save you guess what that's the fed right so you can't have it both ways so yesterday the fed induced rally that so many people are saying how come the fed is, is propping up the prices well if it wasn't for the fed yesterday you would have confirmed the 50-day moving average and you would be having the conversation somewhere around here so you can't be a little bit pregnant yes guys there's a lot of outside forces in the market there's the Fed, right? There's, there's a lot of technology. There's, there's fund managers. There's retail. Everybody plays a part. But it, it's very, very tough to turn around and say, if this doesn't happen, this, this doesn't happen. It's one big cycle, okay? If it wasn't for the Fed yesterday, instead of this majestic $14 candle in the queues, well, we would have been breaking down very, very aggressively. So the next time you turn around and say, well, if it wasn't for the Fed, just keep this in mind. If it wasn't for the Fed, Look where your position was it would be. So there's always a place for something in the market. 
Uh, it all depends how you look at that force. Okay, people always complain about algorithms. Oh, their algorithms are controlling the market. Well, the algorithms could control the market if you're on the wrong side of the technical trade. If you're on the right side of the technical trade, the algorithms are, are your friend. What do you think? Tesla puts up a $12 candle for mom and pop buying three shares on Wall Street bets? It doesn't work that way. It's the algorithm. So everything does have a place in the market. The only question is, how are you positioned, right? How are you positioned in that place to, to capitalize on all these outside forces instead of sitting there complaining, which you already have no control of what's going on. The only thing you have control of what's going on is your, your risk management, your process, and your ability to read market sentiment. Everything else you don't have control, but at least you have control enough to understand that all things happen there's nothing you could do about it. And you're trying to put yourself on the side that there's the high probability where these things will play out. So again, before you start complaining about the Fed and the algorithms and the market makers and your mother-in-law and everything else and the New York Jets and Satan and everything else in the world that's bad and, and, and good, take a step back, take your trading into, into your own hands. There is no boogeyman. There is no be behind the curtain. It's your investments. It's your trading strategy against everything else. The most important thing is be mindful, be respectful of the market, or the market will respect you, uh, will humble you very, very uh, aggressively indeed. So where are we, right? Where are we after this majestic, you know, phenomenal rise uh, off the 50-day moving average on the 50-day? Well, we kind of made, uh, you know, we kind of made a re really aggressive U-turn and went right back to the 50-day moving average. Uh, so today it wasn't the Fed, right? Today is just the natural course of what we've seen now for the last three, four, seven days. The sellers are obviously in control. Technology shares continue to be sold. Even names, uh, the most aggressive names like Apple uh, that were really, you know, pushing up the market. And it was kind of like the last uh, defense of the technology sentiment. Well, eventually it got sold as well. And here we are again. So it's not about what happened yesterday. It's not about what happened three weeks or uh, three weeks ago or three months ago. It's where we are now. And this is the most important part. If you guys notice, we've now touched and tested successfully. If you're a bull, successfully we've tested the 50-day moving average one, two, three, four, five times. Now the question is. How long, right? How long can the market defend the 50-day moving average? If you guys have been watching this broadcast, you know how important that 50-day is. For example, again, we talk about the remount off the October 18 lows, excuse me, October 18 highs on the queues. And this started basically a three-month very, very aggressive rally. So you can see why the 50-day moving average is so important. So the question is, how long can the bulls keep the dam right? Keep the dam in one place before the levee breaks and the water starts filtering out. That's the question that we have to answer going into tomorrow. Because again, if you look at how many names are sitting on the bottom of their channels and how many names are imminent breaking down at the bottom of the channel, you could only, you could only imagine that eventually the bottom of this channel will get broken. Now, that's the magic question. Is it going to be broken tomorrow? Is it going to be broken on Monday? Right? Is it going to be broken Groundhog's Day? Nobody day. Or is it going to be broken at all? We don't know, right? That's the whole point of technical analysis and why we respect levels and trade and make our assessment off that levels. We're not guessing it's going to break. Charts are telling us it looks like it's going to break. It smells like it's going to break. It tastes like it's going to break, but we don't know if it's going to break. Uh, having said that, you know, I'm 99 sell buys going in tomorrow because that's where the charts are, are, are looking at. The only one that looks pretty decent for tomorrow is if you believe in the whole, you know, we're going to raise rates three times going into next year. Well, the financials are the play. And if you can see uh, if, if the 50 day moving average is important to defend, right? Well, the 50 day moving average on the upside is very, very important to reclaim. So if you believe in the whole financials, uh, there are going to benefit from the interest rate hikes. Well, this is the 50-day moving average on Goldman Sachs. So if Goldman Sachs gets above this 50-day moving average, maybe the financials could have a much bigger run than like three days every three and a half months. So that's on, on watch. But, but look how many stocks you have on the bottom of the ranges. Look at CRM, right? CRM is literally one day away, two days away, whatever the case may be, is sitting on the bottom of the range. If this thing confirms the bottom of the range, this thing is gonna get imploded, right? Really, really big move. Look at Microsoft, right? Had this really, really big move up, 
Really, really big move down. And this thing now is mirroring the NASDAQ 100. One, two, three, four, five times on the 50 day. But if this 50 day gets lost tomorrow, look how much room down. You have 15, 17 dollars worth of, of room down. That is going to mirror the NASDAQ 100 itself. Again, there's a lot of value here. Look at a name like INMD. Look how many times it's tested now the 50 day moving average, excuse me, the 150 day moving average. One, two, three, four. Eventually, if this thing starts building down, look how much room it has to go. And you're gonna find a lot of names like that. Even a name like Boeing, who is not at the bottom of the range, the point is it looks like it's one or two days away. It's held 190 several times now, just the same way it held 195 several times a couple of days ago from that really, really good pivot. So if this thing confirms the channel, it's gonna go all the way down to this bottom range here. Maybe it goes all the way down to 185. So it's not that I'm cheering for the bulls to, to give up control. I'm just looking at reality. If you know if there is a snowstorm outside and they're and they're, and they're projecting you know four feet of snow, you don't you know take your toddler, dress him up in flip-flops, right, and a tank top and put him outside. You're preparing for this. And even if the weatherman is wrong, at least you're not caught off guard. So what we're going going, going into tomorrow's session, there's tons of value to the short side. The question is, are they going to confirm? And the biggest one, again, which which was which was realistically the only one you really needed today is Tesla, right? Tesla, you know, held that 930 level macro several times. If you guys watched, if you if you're an active participant today, you saw how many times they find they, they were defending that 930 level. And then finally, just like what we talk about and trying to prepare for tomorrow's session, eventually the levy broke, right? It took out that 930 level, uh, only went down, you know, only went down to 921. But we'll get you, we'll show you the, the macro pivot where, uh, where we, it was a phenomenal trade. Um, but the point is, look how much room now it has to go. And that's the most important part. You don't sit there and hope and pray it comes back. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. But again, you're collecting data to trade off that data responsibly in case you're, instead of hoping and praying uh, that your position will work. So going into tomorrow, a lot of good value on the sell side. We're going to once again watch uh, the cues to see uh, if the bears finally take control over the uh, below the 50 day moving average. And if that's the case, you're going to see a lot of uh, pretty good aggressive uh, downside pressure. We'll see. We'll see. So, um, yeah, I mean, I was waiting for, you know, I had a whole bunch of pivots to the upside today, you know, figure, you know, listen, you know, we had this big, big move yesterday. You know, are they going to confirm today? Um, I was watching Qualcomm. I was watching Marvel. I was watching Costco. All these things, right? All these stocks I was watching. Uh, and then they never got close. Okay. And slowly but surely, as the open happened, people are saying, well, you know, bears are going to get trapped again on the first sell off. They're going to get trapped and watch. We're going to go green again and everything's going to explode day two. Yeah. Okay. I was, I was, listen, I was in that camp as well. I was watching Qualcomm to the upside, Marvel to the upside, Costco to the upside, uh, NVIDIA to the upside, right? I was watching it. And slowly but surely, when they started pulling these things and there was no bounce, now you start to talk about plan B, and it's a very, very uh, Im important bear uh, essence of trading. Whatever doesn't go up, right, must go. And that's exactly what happens. So slowly but surely, uh, the bottom channels on all your favorite technology names started to get hit one by one by one. And we noticed that Tesla never rallied on that first push of the market. And that was the most important part. And this is where, I mean, this is basically the, the, the one and only of the day. And this was a monster, monster move. And now this is the first close today below macro. So all this stuff didn't confirm, right? None of these long side pivots confirmed. Uh, but Tesla, second entry for experienced traders only, 988 if it builds below can flush. So the first move was only a couple of points because again, nobody anticipated uh, nobody anticipated a complete push. So the first move was into this rising support. And then we started looking at it over and over and over again. And it started losing big, big levels. But the key one was this 953 level. And I started tweeting about it uh, on my regular tweeting, uh, Twitter account. So that 953 just kept on holding and holding and holding. If you look at the five uh, and if you look at the support here, where the hell was it? Uh, if you look at the support here, here it is right here. If you look at this whole 953 support, it was holding up several times. And again, just like we talked about a few minutes ago 
uh, potential levy breaking, it finally broke. And this thing just got absolutely hammered. And not only did it come down from the 988 level and confirm 955, it finally confirmed the bottom of this channel here, which is 930. You can see here it held several times. First close below supply. So now you have two areas of support coming in for tomorrow. You got 912. And if the bears start taking control of that 912, 910 level, then you got all the way to 875 and 854. Again, it's not fear mongering. It's, it's not the point of you know, trying to will a stock in your direction. You know, stocks go up, stocks go down. I love Tesla. I trade it to the long side. I trade it to the short side. I'm not a bull. I'm not a bear. And I'm, I'm an opportunist. And the most important part is, you know, taking the side, right? Taking the side where technical analysis is backing your um, is backing your thesis instead of hoping and, and praying that somebody comes in uh, with the 1,200 calls and some you know giga, gigafactory news to, to rise the stock again. So there's a lot of value in Tesla. Uh, I think if it confirms today's channel tomorrow, you're going to see a lot more room uh, down to the downside. So, you know, again, a lot of good move there uh, as well. I think that was the only one to the downside. Uh, AMD, obviously, again, I had a lot of pivots to the upside today. There was nothing uh, even close to that confirmed. Um, yeah, they were coming in for uh, the 900 puts, right? They were coming in for the 900 weekly puts. Just a phenomenal, phenomenal move. Uh, on Tesla. Let me give you guys some names that I like for tomorrow. Um, Tesla, I still like, obviously. Uh, CRM, I'm watching on the bottom channel here. That looks good. Uh, Rivian, Rivian came out with earnings uh, after the close. Not good, not bad. I'm watching this 100 level here. If it starts building below this 100 level here, it should see uh, IPO lows. Um, I like Ambarella to the downside as well. Uh, first really aggressive candle, first close below the 50 day moving average. If this thing confirms, there's another 15 points in this thing as well. That looks good. Uh, I mentioned before INMD, you know, this thing is like a day away from confirming the bottom channel as well. So the value is definitely to the downside. Uh, again, can the market go higher tomorrow? Who the hell knows? Okay, I'm wrong every single day. It's not about uh, being, you know, being wrong theoretically, it's about being wrong financially. And obviously, if the bulls start reclaiming macro channels, Hey, you just buy stock, but but the vice, uh, the theory, uh, the psychology, and everything else in between is to, is pointing to the downside tomorrow. We will see. Don't anticipate. Don't forecast. But be prepared, and that's the name of the game, guys. God bless. Hope everybody stays healthy. I'm gonna go get some rest, and with God's help, I will see you all tomorrow.